Hey, what's up guys? High Tech here. So the iPhone 10 has redefined and advanced the iPhone in a lot of major ways, but opinions on it seem to be pretty split. Some people love it, some people hate it, and honestly, I can see valid points on both sides. Now, I've had the phone for about two months now, and for the most part, it's been the best iPhone experience I've had so far. So let's start with the design. To put it simply, the build quality of this phone is outstanding which is something I expect from Apple products in general, but especially for a smartphone at this price. The glass on the front and back and the stainless steel on the sides make for an extremely premium look and feel. The smoothness and the weight make it really feel like a phone that costs a thousand dollars. Now, even though Apple claims that this is the strongest glass in any iPhone, keep in mind that it is still glass and it will definitely break if you drop it, so it would be a smart choice to get a case. The only complaint I have about the design is the camera bump. It's enormous, but it's not a huge deal. Inside, there's Apple's new A11 Bionic processor, which is the fastest smartphone processor to date according to Geekbench tests. You get 3 gigabytes of RAM and either 64 or 256 gigabytes of storage depending on which model you choose. It's also IP67 water and dust resistant and supports wireless charging. Moving on to the display. Finally, there is an OLED panel in an iPhone. It's a gorgeous 5.8 inch HDR true tone display supporting the P3Y color gamut with a resolution of 2436 by 1125. It's an OLED panel so you get deep blacks and thanks to Apple's excellent color calibration, colors are very accurate. According to DisplayMate.com, it's the highest rated display they have ever tested. I personally love this display. It's sharp and colors are vivid without being overly saturated. And then we have the notch. The main point of contention when it comes to the iPhone 10. For me personally, I don't really notice it that much the majority of the time. Since when I'm using the phone in portrait mode, the notch is never really blocking anything I'm trying to look at. Now, Watching full screen videos in landscape mode is another story though. It's impossible for me to not notice it because it literally juts out into the video. But since the iPhone's display doesn't have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, I usually don't watch videos in full screen mode anyway because it crops off content. Next up are the cameras and Face ID. So the notch also houses the front true depth camera and all of the advanced Face ID technology necessary to facilitate the biggest change Apple made to the iPhone 10, the removal of the home button. Now unlocking the phone requires you to swipe up from the bottom instead of pressing a home button. In my experience, Face ID has been pretty great overall. It's not perfect, it does fail at times, but so did Touch ID. And it's not quite as fast as Touch ID, but considering this is the first implementation, it's really close and will only get better with time. Still, I would have liked to have a fingerprint reader as an option at this price point. The front camera is 7 megapixels with an f2.2 aperture. This camera allows you to take portrait mode selfies and supports the new portrait lighting filters. From my experience, portrait mode on the front camera is just okay at best as it doesn't deal with edge as well, and sometimes the portrait lighting filters cuts off part of the photo. You could also record video at 1080p with auto HDR, and aside from overblowing the lighting sometimes, it performs really well. And then there's an emoji. I think I've used this maybe three times since having the phone. It's a fun feature, but I think the novelty wears off pretty fast. The rear camera is a dual 12 megapixel setup with optical image stabilization in both lenses and two times optical zoom. The main camera is a wide angle lens with an f1.8 aperture and the secondary lens is a telephoto lens with an f2.2 aperture. You can record 720p video at 30 fps, 1080p video at 30 and 60 fps, and 4k video at 24, 30, and even 60 fps which is just insane considering this is a smartphone camera. You can also record slow-mo video at 1080p up to a whopping 240 FPS. This is definitely a top five smartphone camera, and personally, 
I've been really pleased with all of the photos and videos I've taken with it. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about the software experience. The removal of the home button also brings some additional ways for interacting with iOS. To get to the control center, you now have to swipe down from the upper right corner. And to get to the notification center, you swipe down from anywhere other than the right side. To close an app, you swipe up from the bottom. To bring up the app switcher, swipe up from the bottom and briefly hold in the middle. Or you can swipe up and to the right. To close an app from the app switcher, Press and hold on an app until you see the red close icons in the upper left hand corner. Then you can either tap the icon or swipe up to close the app. In terms of battery life, it's been really good and is definitely an improvement over my old iPhone 7. I leave home at 7 a.m. and with lots of heavy streaming throughout the day, I always have at least 30% battery left by the time I get home at night. Overall, the software experience is still the same. iOS is still iOS. It's not very customizable, notifications are still a mess, but it's functional and it's efficient. However, I will say that iOS 11 has probably been the buggiest release yet, but after upgrading to the 11.2 release, things have been very smooth and stable for me. One of the main questions people ask is, is the iPhone 10 worth $1,000? Well, sort of. Now don't get me wrong, you're getting a lot of good stuff with this phone. You're getting the most advanced facial recognition system in any phone. You're getting the fastest processor in any phone. You're getting the most color accurate OLED display in any phone. And in terms of build quality, you're getting one of the best phones ever made. But if you take a look at a phone like the Galaxy Note 8, for example, which also costs $1,000, you can kind of see that you're getting a more well-rounded package. You get facial recognition, albeit not as good. You get a fingerprint reader. You get a larger, higher resolution display, and you get the S Pen and all of the features that come along with that. You also get to do split screen multitasking, and you have basic features like grouped notifications. I'm hoping that iOS 12 brings a lot of changes and unlocks more of the potential of the iPhone 10. But as of right now, I feel like for the price, it could be offering more. Having said that though, I still think it's a great phone, and if you bought it, you wouldn't be disappointed. I'm certainly not. So that's going to wrap it up for this review, guys. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button below. And don't forget to subscribe so you can catch my future videos. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one.